Okay, I'm recording. Uh, so the observer with a focus on transcending, um, transcending the world. Okay, so the observer exercise, if you're in trouble wanting to transcend any aspect of the world, whether it be bosses or whether it be um, uh, work situations or health problems or addiction problems, as soon as you go into the observer, there is one way you can use the observer tool for clearing. Let's say you're feeling breathless or you're feeling hungry or you've got body obsession. Actually, it'd be quite interesting to use it on body obsession as well and food cravings or resentments uh, against people who are wanting to transcend. The thing is, you just um, I would just sit down with your back straight and uh, just and just close your eyes and become aware of the, of the thing that's giving you trouble. Now, let's say, take for example, uh, body obsession uh, is a great one. So if you, if you feel like something like what's happened is maybe potentially uh, you've got an idea that you might've put on weight or your body's feeling more uncomfortable or you're more aware, you're tracking, or you're identified more with your body and it's bringing up some more baggage you know, feelings of um, self, self-loathing or hatred or, or whatever it is. Well, that you can use the observer to transcend that. To, you can use the observer to totally um, transcend body identification uh, until it becomes meaningless. So what you do is you recognize, um, if it's the body is the main thing, you start off with the body. Um, how are you aware of your body in this moment? Are you aware of it on the seat? Does it feel uncomfortable? Does it, are you getting messages like it's feeling like it's getting bigger? Are there feelings associated with the body? If, you, if there are, you take whatever is the biggest thing. If it's a feeling, if the feeling is located anywhere, can you be the observer of that feeling? Or if you're aware of the shape of the body, uh, then that's like a, that's like a cup or that's like a, a mug or a flower pot. So then that's an object. Can you be the observer of the object of the body or any feelings located in the body? Now you just sort of uh, go to whatever it is that seems to be occupying your consciousness. Now, if there's a lot of negative thinking going on, like I'm fat or I wish I hadn't put on weight or whatever it is. So you, you just have to see how you're identifying with your thoughts. Is it like you're sort of, there's, a, there's an attention going to the thinkingness that seems to be in your head? If so, that energy that's being identified with what seems to be thoughts in maybe the location of the head, that's an object. Can you be the observer of that, like that was a ball or something? Can you be the detached observing of any negative thoughts? Can you be uh, an, a detached observer, which is not interested in, in any thoughts that seem to be going on out there? If there's awareness of the body, then how, are, how is the body being registered? Does it feel like it's, uh, you know, it's like it seems to be changing shape there, you know, it's, it, rather than be, you know, and how, how is the shape in awareness? How are you tracking? How are you identified? What's the experience of this? of this object. And when you've got an awareness of what this object is, which we call the body, can you now be that which is observing it or, the, or witnessing it? Or that which is conscious of the body, but which is not the body. Just like if you see a mug on the table, you're not the mug, unless you're very identified with the mug or you're addicted to the mug, then you can get confused or seem to enmesh with it. But actually, a mug is an object and the observer of an object is not the object. So just like the body and the awareness of the body, that which is ob observing or aware of the body is not the body. So can you be the observer or even better, the detached observer? Can you be the observer which gives no meaning to the body, which doesn't really have any interest in registering or identifying or giving any attention or energy uh, to the body and to any thoughts or to any feelings? So just keep peeling the layers back. And as you do this with the body or any feelings in the body or any thoughts, sometimes you might find it's easier to do this with um, 
that you just do it intuitively as an exercise. You don't have to monitor or think about the process because if you're in the observer of the thoughts, thoughts are, you're not using your thinking to orchestrate the process. What do you, what's happening is there's a natural infinite intuitiveness to let go of identifying with objects. And this is also the process of transcendence. Now, if you keep observing things over and over again, eventually they lose their power to, for you to hook into them. It's like they become totally meaningless and uninteresting. And anything that becomes meaningless and uninteresting, you transcend because it disappears from consciousness. If you keep going to the observer and the deeper observer and the observer which has no interest in the body, then the body disappears from consciousness. It's too boring and meaningless to register. So it just disappears. So you become much, that much more free, that much more expansive, that more, much more limitless. You're not limited to the, uh, the, the, the body. You're not stuck in that little object. As you keep going to the observer and the detached observer and the observer which has no interest or gives no meaning or doesn't want to give any energy or interest to hooking into thoughts, eventually you go into the thoughtless presence, that infinite presence which is not limited by tracking or being interested in anything that's passing by, which we call thoughts. If there's feelings and sensations, and you don't have to label it hatred or fear or whatever in the body, or aches and pains or breathlessness, it doesn't really matter what they are, they're all different types of objects. As you keep going to the observer which has no interest, or the observer of that observer, which is not hooking into symptoms or feelings, you go into uh, states of consciousness which are not affected by those unpleasant feelings that come and go. You're going more into that infinite peace and love and presence and power, which is always here if you stop tracking those clouds, those heavy clouds of the body, thoughts and feelings. So whatever it is that you're wanting to transcend, Another way to do the observer exercise is just to clear everything out of consciousness by going to the observer of it and the deeper observer of it until you're in these states of infinite presence. And, uh, and you can actually use it like a clearing exercise, even though it's not meant to be. You know, you can just think of your boss, think of your body, try and bring it back and then clear it. And as you keep doing this, what you're doing is you're just clearing away any last remnants of the attachment to being fixated with body, thoughts, feelings, or physical symptoms. My experience is as you clear these from consciousness, miracles happen because that energy, which is pulling you into those lower fields of consciousness is being released. And those higher fields of infinite presence will sustain you.